everybody. Just wanted to share something that my friend Eddie and I did today. We built bookcases. Um, these bookcases, I have been wanting to do some sort of bookshelves here on this wall for at least a year, possibly two years. And um, the other night, I finally decided that it would just be simpler to go with ordering IKEA um, bookcases and picking those up and putting them together. Um, but in order to fit this wall perfectly, we would have to cut them down to size. And there was a blog post about that, so I knew it could be done, but I wasn't exactly sure how, and I was feeling a little overwhelmed, and my wonderful friend Eddie offered to come over and help me today. And she is just amazing, and I just wanted to give a shout out to her because <laughs> these would still be sitting on the floor in boxes if it wasn't for her. So um, anyway, this I just wanted to share a little bit about how we did this in case anybody else wants to do it. Um, some of the things we learned along the way um, that might make it a little bit simpler for you if you decide to do something like this. So we got the 30 inch wide um, bookshelves and these are I think it's 79 inches high, which I liked because there's room there for crown molding, but they don't go all the way to our uneven ceiling. <laughs> so um, I can kind of finish them out to look a little bit more like built-ins um, without, you know, actually having to deal with the irregularities of our home. Um, so anyway, you can get taller ones, but these are the 30 inch wide ones. And then we cut down on either side a set to, um, to fit so that it can you know, fit the most books, because we have a lot of books. Um, so here's, here's what we did. So we cut the um, shelves, obviously, and, and the, the top, uh, middle, and bottom shelves are also what hold the bookcases together and give it its stability. And the way, I mean, to put these together, it's very simple. Um, you have basically holes here. I, I put one here to show you. So there's holes in the ends of each side of the shelves. And then um, in the outer holes, you put wooden dowels. And on the interior holes, you put um, they're like a combination of metal and plastic dowels of a sort. And then there's this little gray um, kind of locking mechanism that goes into this hole and locks into that gray um, dowel thing. <laughs> and so, um, so it actually is really simple to put these shelves together as is. And that went really quick. Um, the second one we whipped together, like, I don't know, it was probably only 10 minutes or less. Um, the first one was a little figure now, making sure we had everything oriented properly. But yeah, so cutting them down was pretty easy. The actual cutting of the shelves themselves wasn't hard because um, I got this new miter saw, which is super nice. And it's one of those sliding miter saws and it has a new blade on it. So that made it really good um, to cut through because this is particle board. So I was a little concerned it would just splinter everywhere. It really didn't. It, was, it wasn't bad at all. Um, I did tape it. Um, I read that, that putting some masking tape over your cut line can help to hold it to keep everything from splintering and I guess it did anyway it didn't splinter badly <laughs> also having a new sharp blade makes a huge difference um, and this is actually see-through the masking tape it was perfect so I like drew the line on the board pop this on top and then could just cut right down the um, the whole width of the board for um, for it to be a nice clean cut. And then we had the issue of redoing the, um, the holes and everything because you can just screw these together. Like if we had wanted to, we, we, had, we were thinking like, oh, if we could, you know, take in this side that's gonna be up against this other side, we could just put, pop some screws in there and call it a day. They would be hidden, it would be fine. Um, and we were thinking we might do that. Um, the main reason we didn't do that was just because 
with particle board, screws can strip out so easily. Like they could just pull right back out and then what do you do? Um, and I just didn't want to have that issue and then it would not be quite as stable as having like the good solid dowels holding it together. So we tried this, we weren't sure if it would work, but we, um, we tried, you know, drilling holes in the ends just like this, line them up carefully, drill the holes. Um, we used a 19 64th drill bit for the dowel holes and that worked perfectly. Um, we put tape on it to mark how deep it needed to go so we didn't go too deep and lose our dowels in the wood or anything. Um, that worked out really well. That was pretty easy. We did have a couple shelves at the very end as we were getting a little tired that we didn't drill um, in just exactly the right place and we had to kind of wiggle them and it was, you know, just be careful where you put them. Mark them real carefully, drill them really carefully. I did take it slow with the drill bit going into that particle board, um, just trying to be really gentle um, so that it didn't rip it up too much and it worked well. Um, and then we had the issue of these holes here, which were kind of an odd size. So I only had drill bits going up to half inch and this, it was just a little bigger than half inch. And I was like, well, I could probably just like wiggle around and make it work. Don't try that. Did not work well. Don't recommend it at all. Um, so we finally got a five eighths inch bit from the hardware store and it worked really well. Um, I thought it might be a little too big, but it actually worked well. And we just put tape on it to not go too deep because you don't want to go through the whole board. There's nothing, you know, it's nice and clean on the other side. So just almost the whole way through though. So it was a little tricky and I did go all the way through once and it was just heartbreaking. So don't do that. Um, and in order to keep that from flaking, because we did have, I did have a little issue with it. You know, I tried putting the tape over it, but it's just such a big drill bit. It's hard to keep it really clean. So I made this little um, kind of pattern block because I had read also that putting a piece of wood over the particle board when you cut it can help. So I figured it would be the same with drilling and it was. Um, so I drilled the hole through this. I clamped it on with this little clamp and just got it on there nice and tight and drilled through both pieces at the same time. And that helped me also to be able to just do the holes really quickly because I did the measurements exactly from the edge. Just line that up with the edge, drill through, flip it over, do it on the other side. I highly recommend doing that. That would have saved us a, really, a lot of time. And having the right tools from the start would have saved us. So 5 8 inch bit for the large holes, 19 64th for the smaller holes, and get a really good fresh sharp blade on your miter saw and you'll be good to go to do this project. Hope y'all have a wonderful night.